Industry Exit Accenture uses the power of data and digital to help our clients redefine the products they make and how they make them. My name is Claire Blair and I'm Marketing Manager at Industry X. We'd like to welcome you to this session where I'm joined by my colleagues Pascal Brosset and Thiago Martins. Pascal is Industry X Production and Operations Global Lead and Thiago is Managing Director with responsibility for MES and MOM across multiple industries. Today, we answer some of our clients' most pressing questions around digital transformation in manufacturing, and more specifically, the role of technology and data and how MES and MOM can be leveraged to play a major part in the overall success of transformation outcomes. So Pascal, I'd like to put the first question to you. Right now, when we hear about digital transformation, the term digital twin is used repeatedly. What exactly is your interpretation of digital twin? And what does it mean for manufacturers today? Thanks, Claire, and welcome everybody. So what we see across industries is a pretty similar pattern. You know, our clients have started exploring the possibilities of leveraging data to improve their operations, sometimes with simple analytics, sometimes with AI. And they've explored, you know, making everything they could do on one asset or one line with fairly simple analytics. For instance, predictive maintenance, some simple predictive quality. Now they need to go look for the next, you know, the next opportunities, which means they need to move along two axes. First, it's not just optimizing one machine or one line. They need to go at the factory level. And then the next thing they have to optimize for sustainability. So they need to go to the supply chain level. So the scope of what they have to manage is getting bigger. Likewise, so it's more data, more diverse data, most, you know, more sources of data. The second, they have to do more and more sophisticated things with the, with this data. It's not just, you know, simply diagnostics, but they, they want to go into predictive and then prescriptive and then the famous autonomous operation. So all in all, more, more data, more sophisticated usage of the data. So the digital twin is just about taking all the sources of data and bringing them into a unified model that can be understood by people and that can be then on which you can do analytics. So it's not the, you know, the, the 3D vision which you can navigate with AR, VR. That's nice. That's the icing on the cake. The cake is this ability to take massive amounts of data, contextualize it and make it available for a variety of use cases. And that's why it's transformative, which will allow our clients to get to the full benefit of the transformation and scale use cases across factories. Thank you, Pascal. And so, Thiago, are these outcomes not already achieved or achievable by existing MES and the data it provides across the systems landscape? So, Claire, good question, and I hear this all the time. I think the short answer is partially, right? So, if you look at the traditional MES, ERP, LIMS, historian systems that exist out there for the most part, they provide a description of what happened. So some of them has some report that allows you to, to predict what may or may not happen. But it's a tool that is limited. It was decided, it was designed to solve some specific use case, not necessarily use case that Pascal just described now. And the other thing to consider is that most clients that have adopted uh, traditional MES, they have not deployed MES everywhere, right? Because it's complicated, it's expensive, uh, requires a lot of integration, it requires time. So you see that MES is, is changing, it's becoming simpler. It's still the core of digital, uh, digital twin, it's core of the integration. It provides the, the context of the information that you're extracting from the machine, but it's becoming smaller. It's become the core of this, not necessarily all the reports, all the screens, all the customization, everything would be in the MES anymore. So it's adapting. Absolutely, Thiago. I, what we see, it's not MES versus digital twin, it's both. MES will remain the indispensable execution engine and the digital twin, which is a you know, bigger, more flexible, more extensible platform, will allow clients to do you know, decision support, will give them a safe area to uh, optimize, to try new things. And then what we see is when something is demonstrated on the twin, it will naturally flow for execution into the MES. So there's complete complementarity between those two. And so what are manufacturing leaders' options? And can they take advantage of digital twins without having to replace all underlying solutions considering the investments they've already made? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure Tiago can give example. <clears throat> what we see is that the two really work together. And, and you, you, 
the, the use, we see usually three phases. Okay, first it's going to be what we call side by side, where you will have your classical mom stack, which we still need to help clients, as Thiago said, simplify, streamline, get back to standard, so that it's less costly, more nimble to evolve. And then the digital twin will initially be getting data out of out of this stack and and new data, and mostly be here to support decisions. All right, so it will support people. And this is already going to give you more visibility, more reactivity, and will allow to, often allows to liberate a few percent more efficiency, a few percent more quality, with no interaction with the present stack, just by decision support. Then we start selectively where we go closing the loop, where the twin, you know, will get more precise data, real-time data from the machines. We run machine learning algorithm and potentially the twin comes back and we close the loop. And here we do de-bottlenecking of, of critical resources by constantly adjusting uh, parameters. It's a bit what an SPC would do, but S SPC, we call it SPC square, where you have a second loop with machine learning. And then over time, and in some companies, it will take three to five years and say, absolutely okay. You're going to close the loop on more and more processes and eventually you're going to reach autonomous operations where the two again are completely integrated into a seamless architecture where you can see so much the difference between the execution engine of the MES and the, you know, the more optimization part of the digital twin. And we are working with all our clients to invent those progressive roadmaps that will further and further combine the two. Thiago, does that make sense? Yes, let, let me give an example. I'm not trying to be super technical here, but one thing is to extract uh, some, some information from a machine. And then you see, for example, if the machine is working or not, if it's running or not. Well, there's only so much you can do with this information, right? You need to know what product was uh, running on that machine when it stopped, what raw material you're using. You need to compare different shifts Maybe the problem that's happening there is not a machine specific problem, like the operators in a given shift, they're running the machine in a different condition, et cetera. So context is key for this. So you'll never be able to build a decent digital twin if you don't have context of what's happening. So you have the information, but what we do with, with that piece of information, right? So going back to your, to your original question, do I have to rip and replace all my IT assets? No, no, definitely you should not do this. The thing is, do you have the right IT assets to provide information that you need to digital twin tools? Another question being asked is around MES vendors in the market and how they position themselves now when you consider that there are already major cloud platforms and IoT players out there. How do you see these vendors aligning themselves going forward? There are multiple answers to this question, but what I'm seeing happening the most is MES vendors they are adapting to this and working together with cloud hyperscalers like the Google, AWS, and Azure um, in the market. So some MES, some MES vendors, they're going straight to the cloud. Say, so I have everything in the cloud. So from the cloud, I can interface with multiple solutions. I don't have anything on-prem. Some MES vendors, they have a hybrid approach. They'll keep something running the edge, something uh, running on cloud. Some of them are still running on the old model, 100% on-prem. One important thing to consider is that MES is extremely important when it comes to this next uh, generation architecture that we that Pascal described at the beginning. Because again, MES will provide the data, it will provide the context. You need to have MES. But if MES is expensive, if MES is complicated, if a typical implementation takes months or years, et cetera, then it's not super um, uh, easy to adapt, right? So a lot of MES vendors, what they're doing now is to simplify the way you adopt MES. So I remember like 20 years ago, MES was mainly like custom. Like 10 years ago, we had, we had a lot of uh, mature options in the market, like monolithic applications, expensive, hard to implement, like two kits that you could be whatever you wanted on top of those. If you look at the MES market today, you see very mature solutions, proving like hundreds of thousands of different plants, focused on some subset of use cases, but then the system is extended with low code, no code, so now you don't have to do a lot of customization in your MES anymore. You can do this outside some analytic tools. So you don't have to build hundreds or thousands of reports for different plants. You can defer this to something outside of the MES. And also IoT solutions. Really, if the problem that we're trying to solve is just to take some piece of information and calculate a KPI, maybe you don't even need an MES. You can do this outside of the MES, right? So more and more I'm seeing vendors focusing on what they do and clients by not only MES, but MES, low code, no code, analytics, IoT, and combining these things together 
to solve the problems in a cost effective way. And Tiago, I think what you say is the cloud is the big unifier, right? Because indeed, as the MES vendors are opening their solutions, bringing them in the cloud to take advantage of the power uh, of the power of the cloud, some clients will say, you know, I'm going to keep evolving more as a MES vendor and selectively select cloud, like you say, local, no code, cloud tools to extend it. Some clients will say, I'm going to keep my MES more simple and I'm going to invest in the dual twin. But a big unifier and a way of bringing those two into unified architecture will be the cloud. And I, so I think our clients will have multiple options to take advantage of, the, uh, of those technologies and every client will have a different recipe of combining them. Absolutely, Pascal. And just to add a little bit more, since you're talking about cloud in manufacturing here. So I remember 10 years ago, uh, this was considered like impossible, uh, too risky. Uh, we have latency issues. I don't trust the, the, the data center where I put my servers, etc. If you do a search today to see how much it costs to have a redundant link coming from your site, how much a software defined network will cost, and even if you consider like hybrid solutions like Azure Stack or Amazon Outpost, where you can run part of the cloud inside your own data center on-prem, you'll be surprised with how cheap these things are. So if you're still considering, like someone watching this video, if you're still considering that a cloud is too risky or too expensive, check it again. Like in the last two, three years, a lot of new offerings from the hyperscalers came up. And yes, it is cost effective today. And if you talk about security, there are several uh, studies that show yeah it's probably more it's probably safer to have your data in a cloud provided well configured than in your own data center relying on the plant guys to go there and take care of it right so cloud is not a problem anymore cloud is an enabler cost effective enabler that allows all these things that we've been saying here thank you both this has been really insightful pascal perhaps you can share where viewers can access more information on this topic and get in touch with us Sure. So uh, if our viewers want to know a little more, they can go and check Accenture.com slash Industry X and uh, they will find either Industry X General or more in-depth MES and also our point of view on cloud and how to, uh, sorry, to uh, on Digital Twin and how to implement it and also uh, background on the cloud. Also, you can visit my LinkedIn page and I'll be happy to take all your comments. So thank you very much for your time. Looking forward to uh, fruitful conversations.